In this clip, I review a student's Docker file for real-world PHP with FPM and give them advice on how to improve it. All right, last one and then we're done. All right, Vlad, uh, thanks for waiting. So we're on PHP FPM now, another PHP user. Uh, we're doing PHP FPM Alpine. So this is a small image to start and then they load uh, FPM on top of it. And then you're setting all of your versions up here. Great, uh, your directories, setting up a bunch of different environment variables that you can override. Uh, and then there's a whole, yep, this is exactly, this is PHP. <laughs> this is this is true production PHP. Good job on that. Uh, this is exactly how mine would look. Um, now, uh, yeah, you're setting PHP dependencies, and then you're doing APK down here. Now, I would probably do versions. I would pin versions again down here, and then... Um, yeah, lots and lots of dependencies. I would pin the ones that your app uses in production. All of the little stuff like curl and git and stuff, you probably don't need to pin. Um, and you've got your pins down here on PHP 3, so good for that, good there. And then even more um, extensions. We got Peckle in there. We got all the proper Docker PHP extension installer, so that's good. Then you're adding a composer user, great right here. So it's important that you remember uh, for everyone else that, um, oh, look at that. In Alpine, we cannot pin versions of Alpine packages. I did not know that. Um, that seems odd, but uh, I don't have enough information to, to do that. So this is an interesting point. And if you watch my Docker uh, over here, I mentioned earlier on, oh, right here on the Docker talk, so you can go over to Docker's website and watch my talk from DockerCon. And I give a 10 minute argument on minimal images versus Alpine. So if you're in PHP and you're using the PHP um, images, you might consider a Debian minimal image. Let's see if there's a slim. Uh, oh, no, they just have Alpine. So unfortunately they're not using a slim option, but um, with Node and some other ones, there are slim options. And sometimes I prefer those. In fact, most of the time I prefer those over Alpine because the difference is like 50 meg overall um, total. So it's not, I don't do it for size reasons. And then lately with Alpine, between Alpine security issues, the, the fact that you can't CVE scan it very well, uh, and so it, it actually, to me, right now as a container, Alpine is less secure than the most current Debian release of a base image. That's my opinion. But I talk more about that in my DockerCon talk. So scroll up in the chat, or um, I'll throw it back in here one more time for those of you that have just joined. Um, but I'm, I might consider that if I can't pin versions, because I'm just so paranoid because I've had production outages due to version incomp incompatibilities that I pin everything. Um, all right, so yeah, we've got composer and you're changing chone down here. Yep, changing permissions like you need to. Um, good, good, good. You're copying over some, um, some stuff here. Now, you know you can actually make this, <clears throat> excuse me, a copy command and um, actually, no, never mind. Don't do that. <laughs> Keep it like it is. Um, you're echoing in a memory limit. That's good. So you can overset, you can set that and override that. Uh, you've got a lot of copy files here. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of opportunity here for uh, consolidating, but you could consolidate if they were going to the same, uh, directory, like, um, right. Uh, well, you got some different names on the out. So yeah, you, you've, you've, you've cleaned that up pretty well. I was just looking for some opportunity to reduce the number of copies. Um, and then we're doing some setup for cron, looks like. And then doing some last minute shown for the incoming um, 
app files. And what did we do? Did we do our copy our our code? Work Dirk app folder. You've got a health check in your Docker file, A+. Plus. So uh, I love seeing health checks in Docker files. Kubernetes won't take advantage of them, but Docker Swarm will. And that way you don't have to depend on an operations person to figure those out later. So yeah, it's, um. oh, it's a core image. Okay. So you wouldn't be copying your, your code into there. Great. And then, yeah. And so it looks like what you're doing here is it's also something that I've used in production many times, especially with PHP, is you're using supervisor as the base um, process. And it's acting as the init. And then it's launching the various things you need to launch. And I'm assuming that since you have cron and you're going to have PHP FPM, uh, so there's probably some other stuff here you're doing with supervisor. Nginx is going to need to run. So you're going to have at least three processes, I bet, as subprocesses. And that's the right way to do it, to add sub supervisor in there. Now, if you were trying to avoid supervisor, it does get tricky on Swarm. Oh, and syslog. Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure why you're running syslog and you're not using Docker drivers, but um, I'm sure you have a good reason. <laughs> uh, but if you're using syslog to then get them out into Docker's logging using STD out, that's really what you should be using, STD air, STD out for logging and ideally not using syslog inside the image. But um, that's the recommended best practice. There are a few cases I've seen where it's necessary to get to use our syslog, but um, yeah. Overall, it's a very standard, I think, PHP file, and it's looking like you're doing a lot of good stuff here. What One thing you could really do, if this is a base image, one thing that you could maybe optimize is uh, figuring out a way to combine your base image with your regular images or um, use multi-stage to reduce any of this unnecessary, if you don't need all this stuff, right? Because there's a lot of stuff you're adding in here. And it's I don't know whether this stuff is really needed by the production app or if it's just needed to do stuff before the app starts, right? So now that we have multi-stage, and maybe you're using that in your other files, in your uh, the files that it's coming from, the other Docker files. But now that we have multi-stage, I really like to break out the build dependencies from the production dependencies. And basically at the very top, I only put in the production and that's the image that I will use at the end. And it um, it sort of flows in that way. In case if you're, if you're looking for an example, again, going back to my DockerCon talk, I go through a walking example in that DockerCon talk uh, here um, on how you might break out. And I think it had four or five stages where I had an initial stage that's just for production and it's sort of the base layer. And then I have a dev dependency layer, but that layer is never used for production. Uh, it's only used for development and all that stuff. And then I have a build phase, then I have a testing phase uh, or stage, and then I have the final production stage. So it certainly makes the files look more complicated, but I think at the end, it reduces complexity of your final image. It reduces attack surface. So uh, you maybe are already doing that in your other projects. And, uh, oh, you're saying supervisor has problems with logging. Ah, so um, interesting. Other than that, I think it looks like a great Docker file. Uh, I think you're, you even got the stop signal in there, which I see very rarely. I thought sig term was a default, but nothing wrong with setting a default in there just to be more literal. Um, but it is pretty cool that you know about that because I rarely see it in Docker files because people don't realize that that stop signal option exists. Um, so good for you on that because I think a lot, and something that in my DockerCon talk I talked a lot about was shutting down apps. So the importance of properly shutting down connections, I'm sure it looks like something that you've already known about and learned about and are handling in your app. So good stuff. Hey, thanks for watching. Remember to click subscribe and the notification bell if you want to know when I go live every week to talk about Docker and DevOps and take your questions. I also have other videos over here, or you could just go try to solve that Rubik's Cube you got at a conference last year.